Barbados, we must never allow present circumstances to define our future. In the past, we were known for our strong and decisive leadership, our social, economic and political stability, and our well-educated and productive workforce. Who we become will depend on the vision and the focus we have. These series of videos will challenge us as a people to dig deep within and find our purpose. We are Refocusing Barbados. Hello, once again, this is Mac, and this is Refocusing Barbados. Bringing to you the issues as they affect our society and looking at them in a very dispassionate way so that we can affect the type of changes we need in our society. Now, yesterday the Barbados had a party stage a successful march. But my question is, what will the party take away from this? Is it a rite of passage? Or is it a case of a people rallying around a common cause? Or are they rallying around a personality? I have five children. And my concern is for the type of society they were living after I'm gone. Will it be a society that is equitable? Or will they have to struggle against a government that is unable to lift itself above all that is mundane about politics? And I say this knowing very well that for the most part we are a tolerant society. But there's a danger in this. And that a leader may tend to believe that tolerance equates to acceptance. My question to all Barbadians is what type of society will we bequeath to our children and our grandchildren? And what is our responsibility? Whatever we think our responsibility to our children is, we cannot abdicate that same responsibility because it's a binding obligation upon us. There are some observations that I have made and they are of great concerns to me. I think as a country we need to begin the conversation meaningfully and honestly. And we as a people, we have already worked out in our minds that the Democratic Liberal Party, the government by which forms the government, is incapable of managing this economy. Because what we have seen has been less than excellent. In fact, the performance of this administration has been mediocre. Now what we have become accustomed to as a people is that the opposition is that party that we look to to form the next administration. And as we look at the, the Barbados Labour Party and all that it is struggling with at this time, we have to look at the leadership in that of that party. Because we realize finally that leadership is extremely important in anything, organization, country, even in a home. And I have some questions I have to ask and I will ask this the, the, today. And the first question I, I, I want to ask is, will Ms. Motley define the office of Prime Minister? Or will the office of Prime Minister define her? What impact will she have on the political, social and moral landscape of our country? Will she have a positive influence on our youth? Will mothers and fathers hold her up as a role model for their sons and daughters? 
Miss Martin's aim? Is it to bring about the necessary reforms our country requires at all levels of our society? Will she be able to allay the fears of the Christian community? What is the effectiveness of Miss Martley's reach? Is Miss Martley equating the people's admiration for her as an acceptance of her to the extent that she becomes the country's next Prime Minister? And what is the kink in Miss Martley's armor? Every leader has a kink in his armor. Exactly how big is Miss Motley? Can she lead this country with equity and justice despite some persons in our society vigorously opposed to her? Will she become a solo act? In other words, will everything be about Miss Motley? Is she titled to become the country's next Prime Minister, or does she think so? Finally, what does Miss Motley represent? If we as a country are not willing to ask the difficult question, and by difficult I do not mean by degree, but obviously by not being very pleasant, then we are not prepared to settle to vet our leaders before we elect them. You see, the political party is not concerned with the quality of the candidate in terms of his ability to serve. The political party is only concerned with the quality of the candidate as he is capable of winning a seat in Parliament. So it is our duty to vet all candidates to ascertain the level, their level of thinking. Just as we will not purchase a pants or a shirt before we first try it on, so we must not elect our leaders before we have a deeper look into the fundamentals of their thinking. We cannot afford to be mindless participants in our democracy. Politicians love this. Because politicians do well when the people choose to abandon their minds. The lessons of 2008 until now have shown us this. But are we prepared to require of our leaders to reach for higher standards in their behavior? to display a deeper commitment to the ideals of a true democracy? And will we require them to demonstrate a level of thinking that gives our citizens a sense of security? And if we demand these things of our leaders, then and only then, will our only response be vigilance. I thank you very much. I look forward to the conversation we will have on our Facebook page. And it's a joy talking to you.